Welcome to the Flash Finds Podcast, the world's fastest podcast where we explore how Facebook can help you with the stuff you're into. I'm Emma Rogue, joined by Nathan the Cat Lady, a Facebook creator. So Nathan, if you're into pets, what kind of stuff can you find on Facebook? Well, I make reels about useful tips for pet owners. For instance, cats don't like still water, so all of my cats have cat fountains. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. What a great episode. See you next time on the Flash Finds Podcast, all about discovering the stuff on Facebook you care about. Bye. Your day just got a whole lot better. You're listening to the Mutual Audio Drama Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by drfloyd.com. This week, starring Chuck McCann, Fred Stoller, Patrick Bristow, and Kevin Bernson. When we last left our hero, Dr. Floyd, and our villain, Dr. Steve, the two had tried to escape from the book they were trapped in and returned to Saddle River City by pushing the button on the remote control for the Translatora. Instead of being returned to their home, however, they found themselves aboard a whaling ship in the middle of the ocean conversing with a sailor named Ishmael. Excuse me, Mr. Ishmael, sir. Could you please tell us where we are? Uh Aha, stop, you merrymaker. Always with a jovial rib or two about you. And I see you know how flaskin' on your fun. You know very well we are indeed presently aboard the whaling ship, the Pequod. Whaling ship? What makes a whaling ship different from a regular ship? Who, sir? The differences are many. A ship such as the Pequod that is built for whaling has several unique traits, the details of which I will now relate. First, you have uh, the... No need, Ishmael. Thank you. <laughs> Stubb is once again pulling your leg. He knows all about whaling ships. Why did you do that? I wanted to hear what he had to say. Trust me, you get that guy going with some minute aspect about whaling or whales or whaling ships or just about anything within 30 miles of an ocean, and he'll go on for pages telling you all about it. Pages? What do you mean, Floyd? I'm afraid we've wound up in another book. Another book? Oh, this is just great, Floyd. I go into the library to check out my first book, and I wind up trapped in some sort of educational version of Quantum Leap. What book are we in now? Moby Dick by Herman Melville, and apparently in this version you're cast in the role of Stubb, the second mate, and I'm cast in the role of Flask, the third mate. Well, well, well. If I'm the second mate and you're the third mate, that means I'm the boss of you, right? And that means you have to do everything I ask. Uh, don't count on it, Buster. What's this book about, anyway? Moby Dick is about a whaling ship captain who is obsessed with hunting down a large white whale named Moby Dick. We gotta get out of here. Put your arm back around me and I'll push the button again. Why? What's the rush? Before Dr. Floyd can answer, the ship's captain steps to the railing of the quarterdeck and a hush falls over the crew. The captain is a fierce, wild-looking man with a scraggly black beard and a peg leg. Who is that, Floyd? Remember the captain I told you about that was obsessed with hunting down the white whale? Yeah. That's him, Captain Ahab, one of the most notorious characters in all of literature. How did he lose his leg? He lost it the first time he tangled with Moby Dick. Wait a minute, he lost his leg fighting Moby Dick before, and now he's going back out after him? Yep, that's what makes him such an interesting character. Ahab is a man so possessed by revenge, he's willing to risk everything he has, his ship, the lives of his crew, and even his own life to hunt down Moby Dick. Oh, sounds like Captain Ahab and I have a lot in common. Oh, really? Yes, I'm willing to risk everything I have to get rid of you, Floyd. My ship, my sock-shaped assistant. What about your life? Uh, I said we had a lot in common, not everything, Floyd. Uh, Let's not get silly. Just then, Captain Ahab reaches into his pocket and holds up a gold coin for all to see. Lucky... Do you see the Spanish ounce of gold? It is a $16 piece, man. A doubloon. Do you see it, man? Mr. Starbuck, hand me on top maul. As the first mate, Mr. Starbuck fetches a top maul or hammer to give Captain Ahab, Dr. Steve turns to Dr. Floyd. Mr. Starbuck, the famous coffee shop mogul? Uh, not exactly. Mr. Starbuck is a fictional character. But the coffee chain is named after him. Oh, you mean because he pops up all over the place and people like to give him four dollars for a watered-down cup of joe? Uh, no. They call the coffee chain Starbucks because one of the founders wanted to name the shop after something from Moby Dick. 
And the other founder thought people wouldn't want to drink coffee from a shop called Pequod's. Well, he was right about that. Hey, look, Ahab's nailing that doubloon to the mast there. Now, whoever of ye who raises me a white-headed whale with a wrinkled brow and a crooked jaw, whoever of ye raises me that white-headed whale with three holes punctured in his starboard fluke, whoever of ye raises me that same white whale, he shall have this gold ounce, my boys. Yes, Hooray! Dr. Steve and Dr. Floyd watch silently as Captain Ahab walks right past them. If Captain Ahab is pleased to walk the planks, no one can say he can't. But there's got to be some way of muffling the noise. Captain Ahab stops walking and turns around to face Dr. Steve. What? Am I a cannonball stub that thou wouldst want me in that fashion? Go thy ways, I had forgot. Below to thy nightly grave, where such as ye sleep between shrouds, to use ye to the filling one at last. Down dog and kennel. I am not used to be spoken to that way, sir. I do but less than half like it, sir. Avast. No, sir, not yet. I will not tamely be called a dog, sir. Oh, well then be called ten times a donkey and a mule, and be gone, or I'll clear the world of thee. Dr. Steve stands dumbfounded as Captain Ahab turns and walks away. I was never served so before without being given a hard blow for it. Okay, I think it's time we got out of here, Dr. Steve. Oh, but I wanted to try and spot Moby Dick and win that doubloon. Dr. Steve, we've got to get out of here. Why? Remember when I said that Captain Ahab would risk his ship and the life of his crew to catch Moby Dick? Yeah. Well, he does, and I don't want to give away the ending of the book, but this ship eventually catches up with Moby Dick, and when the waves die down, only one crewman survives, and it sure isn't Flask or Stub. Oh, okay, gotcha. Let's go. All right, put your arm around me. Here we go. Dr. Floyd pushes the button on the translator remote control, and with a loud bang, he and Dr. Steve have once again disappeared. We now leave the whaling ship, the Pequod, and find ourselves at the front door of a small house in Athens, Greece. There is a blinding flash of light, and Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve ah! suddenly appear in midair and come crashing to the ground. Oh, well, this certainly doesn't look like... Saddle River to me. No, it doesn't. I wonder where... Just then, four men walk up to the door of the house and stand in a circle with Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve. Is all our company here? You are best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, Say what the play treats on, then read the name of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Floyd, what's going on? Who are these people? Well, if this is Athens, like that one fellow said, and these men are putting on the play Pyramus and Thisbe, then I have a bad feeling that we've landed in the William Shakespeare play A Midsummer Night's Dream, and we've been cast as two of the Mechanicals. Mechanicals? Did they even have cars in Athens back in this time period? Not mechanics, mechanicals. It's a group of Shakespearean characters who put on a play at the end of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Wait a minute. Shakespeare wrote a play inside of another play? Oh, sure. He did that a couple of times. There's a play inside a play in Hamlet, and also in Love's Labor's Lost. Oh, that's ridiculous. You go to watch one play, and then you wind up watching two plays. It's like a set of those little Russian dolls. Well, you better get used to the idea and brush up on your Shakespeare, because it looks like we're going to be putting on a show for the Duke. Zounds! Have Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve really been transported into Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream? And if they have been, will they be forced to perform in Pyramus and Thisbe, the famous play within a play? And if they are forced to perform, what roles are are they to be or not to be? That is the question. Find out next time on the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Episode number 704, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd, starred Chuck McCann as Captain Ahab, www.chuckmccann.net, Fred Stoller as Ishmael, Patrick Bristow as Peter Quince, and Kevin Burnson as Bottom. Music for this episode by Jody Whitesides, www.jodywhitesides.com. This episode was written by Grant Pachoco. Leave us a voicemail at area code 818-332-3053. Episode number 704 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd is copyright 2008 Dr. Floyd Industries. All rights reserved.
Clear the airwaves! Clear the airwaves! It's now time for Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation Rangers secret message for you members of the Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation. Remember, kids, only official radio adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Rangers can decode Dr. Floyd's secret message with the secret decoder ring available only from www.imaginationranger.com. All right, grab your secret decoder rings and a pencil and paper and prepare to set your imagination to fun. Remember, Dr. Floyd is counting on you. And here is the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Ranger secret message for episode number 704, A Whale Tale. 9, 8, 23, 26, 18, 23, 23, 8, 2, 3, 15, 13, 7, 1, 17, 18, 17, 17, 8, 2, 25, 7, 1, 6. And that was a message from Dr. Floyd himself to all his Imagination Nation Rangers. You can join Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation and become an Imagination Nation Ranger only at www.imaginationranger.com. And until next time, set your imagination to fun. Say, Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans, do you have what it takes to accept the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd 2008 Summer Reading Challenge? If you can read 10 books from now until September 5th, 2008, you can earn yourself a nifty Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd prize. The challenge is open to Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans of all ages, and all it will cost you is the price of one postage stamp. Surf on over to www.drfloyd.com slash challenge and download and print out the official 2008 Summer Reading Challenge Log. Fill it out as you read your books and then mail it back to Dr. Floyd headquarters. Just a few weeks later, you'll receive a special Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd surprise in the mail. It's just that easy. What are you waiting for? Get over to www.doctorfloyd.com slash challenge Download the reading log and get reading. And always remember to set your imagination to fun. Don't just sit there. You're under strict orders to go to www.parary.com. Hip. Ah, Saturday's Story Circle in the Mutual Audio Network. A time for the family to gather together and enjoy tales filled with adventure, humor, and fun. Speaking of family-friendly, have you listened to Bells in the Bathroom? Catch it on Friday Follies and every other week on Sunday Showcase. It's a time for the family to gather together and enjoy tales filled with stinky puns, odd characters, and bizarre plots, such as they are. Bells in the Bathroom on the Mutual Audio Network. It will have your family going around in circles.